We are looking at advanced reaction engineering design equations. We have talked about design equations and uh, we derived the design equations for various situations. Let me quickly run through all that. So, we said for a batch the reaction time is n a 0, 0 to x a d x a by minus of r a times v. We have derived this. Now, we can plot this if a constant volume batch for example, then v you can take it out of the integral. So, that this becomes C a 0 by minus of r a this is what I have plotted here C a 0 by minus of r a versus x a. This integral uh, will be in 0 and x a whatever is the area under the curve becomes the reaction time. Or in other words, if you have uh, some data on uh, your of your reaction you plotted in the form of C a 0 by minus of r a versus x a simply area under the integral from 0 to x a gives you the reaction time that is for a batch that is only for a constant volume batch. Now, if the volume does change due to uh, various reasons then appropriately we have to take into account the effect of volume change which also we have done and we have done some exercises to illustrate this as well. Now, the second uh, situation the, in, in fact I have shown this here the, for the case of constant volume batch this is what you are getting. Okay. Now, if it is for a CSTR we have written the design equations also we have shown that the residence time for a CSTR is given as C a 0 x divided by minus of r a. Once again we can make a plot of C a 0 by minus of r a versus x a and this data comes from our experiments I mean we have shown how to do these experiments and so on. So, this data comes from our experiments. So, that you can plot this and then if you want to take the reaction from 0 to x a then the area under this uh, rectangle uh, gives you the uh, residence time for a CSTR. Okay. This is what is written here residence time for a CSTR is C a 0 x by minus of r a which is the rectangle that you can see here. Once again the same data C a 0 by minus of r a versus x a is used to find out residence time for a CSTR. Okay. Now, we can do the same thing with this with a PFR once again we have we have derived a little earlier that the residence time for a PFR is C a 0 integral of minus d x a by minus of r a. Okay. So, when you plot C a 0 by uh, minus of r a versus x a once again area under the integral 0 to x a this area gives you the residence time for a PF uh, for a PFR. Notice here that the residence time for a PFR the integral the reaction time for a constant volume batch which is uh, given as T r the the area the integrals are the same or in other words we can look upon reaction time in a batch. Uh, as equivalent to the uh, residence time in a PFR they are they are the same because it talks about the time of res time that the fluid elements spend in the reaction environment. Okay. This is something that uh, uh, we have understood based on whatever we have done. We can continue this and perhaps look at a more interesting situation this is something that uh, uh, could happen or uh, it could have various other kinds of uses. Let us for example, look at a sequence of stirred tanks. What is the sequence of stirred tanks? Sequence of stirred tanks is reactor 1, reactor 2, reactor 3 I will put 1, 2, 3 here just to uh, just to indicate that there are so many uh, tanks. Okay. Now, what is it that we have? We have uh, a reaction taking place reaction taking place in reactor 1, reactor 2, reactor n that means fluid elements entering reactor 1 and the moving to reactor 2 then moving on up to reactor n and coming out. Okay. Now, we, are, we have written the uh, design equations for a CSTR I mean something that we have written for quite some time. So, accordingly I have written what is the reactor volume reactor volume V 1 is F a 0 x 1 by minus of R a 1. Okay. What is reactor volume 2 F a 0 x 2 minus of x 1 divided by minus of R a 2. Notice here in a, in a CSTR reaction takes place at the exit conditions and the reaction rates at the exit condition has to be taken. Okay. F a 0 x 2 minus of x 1 is the moles of component A that is uh, undergone chemical reaction okay. divided by the rate of reaction gives you the volume of the equipment. Now, we can put it in the form of residence time by dividing by volumetric flow uh, at the inlet that gives you the residence time in the stirred tank 1, residence time in stirred tank 2. Similarly, uh, reactor volume of stirred tank n is F a 0 x n minus x n minus 1 this is x n minus 1 what is entering here is x n minus 1 therefore, x n minus x n minus 1 multiplied by V a 0 this is the moles of component A that has been react reacted divided by the reaction rate gives you the volume. 
and residence time is simply you have to divide by the volumetric flow. So, you get C A 0 x n minus x n minus into the R A n or in other words tau 1 is C A 0 x 1 minus of R A 1, tau 2 C A 0 x 2 multi, multi, minus x 1 divided minus of R A 2. So, if you make a plot of C A 0 by minus of R A something that we already said versus x. So, you get this this curve which is the performance of the of the reaction. Now, if you look at this area, this area going from 0 to x 1. So, this area you can see is tau 1 and you can see here this area, this area is tau 2 C A 0 x 2 minus of x 1. You can see x this is x 2 x 2 minus of x 1 divided by minus of R A 2. This is the residence time for reaction 2 for reactor 2 and similarly for residence time for reaction 3 and reaction n and so reactor 3 and reactor n and so on. So, or in other words what we are trying to say here is that if you have a stirred tank, if you have a stirred tank a sequence of stirred tanks simply you have to construct these rectangles and then area of those rectangles gives you the residence time plotted in the form of C A 0 minus of R A versus x. So, so what we are trying to say here is that we could have situations in which the reaction kinetics are not very easy to determine, but what is not so difficult to determine are this kind of data C A 0 by minus of R A versus x. This kind of data is relatively easy to determine and therefore, it is relatively easy to determine what is the reaction time that is required for a given extent of reaction okay. and that way you can you can use maybe a number of stirred tanks or maybe uh, 1 PFR and so on to drive the reaction to the end point of your interest. So, this is uh, the point that I was uh, trying to clarify. So, our job now to determine what is the relationship between concentration and conversion for a single reaction that is what we are considering right now. If it is a gas phase reaction the reaction once again let me write down is A A plus B B equal to C C plus D D C as an example. So, what you have got here is that if it is a gas phase reaction which is a gas law which is P V equal to Z and R T, Z is the compressibility factor. Now, at, at the initial state or at the entrance it is P 0 V 0 Z 0 N T 0 R T it is a batch system. So, this ratio gives you V by V 0 Z by Z 0 N T by N T 0 R cancels gas constant T by T 0. Now, essentially what we are saying now is that since we already derived the relationship between uh, n t and n t 0 from our stoichiometry, we know that v by z 0 can be written in terms of this ratio which is already derived in the last class 1 plus y a 0 is the mole fraction of the inlet x a is the extent of reaction delta a is the change in number of moles per mole of the reference component a. So, in t by t 0 p 0 by p z by z 0. In other words now we are able to tell what is the volume of the equipment how it depends on the variables of the system which is change in number of moles arising from the number of moles changing because of reaction and change in temperature if any change in pressure if any change in the compressibility factor if any. Typically if concentration is what we are interested in because we want to express uh, the reaction rate function in terms of concentration we need concentration which is simply N A divided by V. Now, N A by definition N A 0 times 1 minus V X A because that is how we define conversion and V comes from the above equation as V 0 times 1 plus Y A 0 X A delta A multiplied by temperature T by T 0 Z by Z 0 P 0 P. In other words using this relationship we are able to express concentration in terms of conversion X A. Okay. Similarly, we can do the same thing for components B component C component D and so on. Therefore, we can express the reaction rate function in terms of conversion. This is as far as the uh, batch system is concerned. Suppose, we have a flow system. Flow system means our previous relationship P V equal to N R T Z N R T is replaced by P small v where small v is the flow rate through the system. So, we have P small v times Z N Z F T R T F T is the flow rate v is uh, molar uh, volumetric flow. So, p 0 v 0 z 0 f t 0 r t once again we get a relationship very similar to what you already talked about v by v 0 in terms of f t by f t 0 p 0 by p t 0 by and z 0. So, that now you can express concentration C A as f A by v f A is molar flow of A at any position and v is a volumetric flow. 
Therefore, by definition, we know that FA is FA 0 times 1 minus of XA because that is how we have defined conversion and V which is now coming from this equation as V 0 times 1 plus Y A 0 X plus delta. This, this relationship V 0 in this ratio F T by F T 0 we already shown is equal to 1 plus Y A 0 X A delta. So, we are able to express concentration in terms of conversion. Similarly, we can do for component C, component C, D and I. So, what we have done uh, is that you have used the stoichiometry of reaction and then using the stoichiometry of reaction and the gas law, we have been able to convert concentration in terms of conversion. So, that now we can substitute this C A function in the reaction rate function and carry out the necessary integration or solution of the algebraic equations. Now, just like we have done for component A, we can do for component B. If it is a batch system, it becomes N B by V. Once again, we get a nice relationship in terms of initial composition of component B and uh, conversion X A and C A 0 and so on. Similarly, we just like we have got for C A and C B, we can do for C C and C D. So, what we want to now do, let me just quickly show you a problem sheet from which we want to look at one of these problems. The problem we want to solve is that we have a reaction which is acetaldehyde undergoing decomposition thermally giving you methane and carbon monoxide. This reaction takes place at 520 degree C, it is at one atmospheric pressure. We want to conduct this reaction to the extent of X A equal to 0.5 which means we want to convert 50 percent of it. We can conduct this reaction in a CSTR continuous input of uh, component A continuous output is in a CSTR. We can conduct this reaction in a PFR where component A comes in and reacts and goes out. We can conduct this reaction in a constant volume batch reactor. Okay. In, the, in the sense we put all the reagents inside close all the valves and conduct the reaction at 520 degrees C or alternatively we can also conduct this reaction in a constant volume batch reactor. How do you get constant volume? you have a piston which is able to move up and down depending upon the change in pressure inside. Therefore, if you charge this acetaldehyde in this, in this uh, uh, volume and as the reaction proceeds there will be an increase in volume and it will keep changing the volume. So, that it, the pressure will keep changing, but volume will change. Pressure will keep constant while well, volume will change. In other words, you can conduct this reaction in CSTR at constant pressure, in a PFR at constant pressure in a constant volume batch reactor or constant pressure batch reactor. What we would like to do is to do perform a calculation to see what is the size of the equipment or the reaction time that you would require for each of these reactor operation choices. This is the problem we would like to solve. So, let us how do we go about doing uh, carrying out a solution to a problem like this. Of course, we first have to write the stoichiometry to understand what happens component A, component B, component C. What do we start with? We are starting with pure component A. What goes in is pure component A. Therefore, B, C, there is no inert, these two are 0. What comes out? By definition, we have said whatever is the, if X A is the extent or conversion, then what comes out is given by F A 0 times 1 minus of X A. How much B is produced? By stoichiometry, we can say so much is produced and similarly, so much of C is produced. Therefore, the total number of moles that is coming out of the equipment is F T is F A 0 times 1 plus X A. Total number of moles you have put in is simply F A 0. So, what do we have? You are putting in F A 0 moles which is coming in and what goes out is F A 0 times 1 plus X A which means there is an increase in the moles because of chemical reaction. It is a gas phase reaction. So, acetaldehyde is a gas. These are all gases at the temperature of reaction. So, we will have to apply gas law to understand how volume changes as the reaction proceeds. So, we have already shown little earlier that V by V 0 is F T by F T 0, T by T 0, Z 0, Z by Z 0 and P 0 by P. It is a gas law statement, we know this for uh, from our early understanding of gas laws. Now, F T by F T 0, you can see from here F T by F T 0 is simply 1 plus X A. Therefore, if the temperature of the reactor does not change, this we maintain the temperature at constant at 520 C and at the conditions the pressure also does not change much and therefore, this is 1, this is 1, this is 1. Therefore, simply V by V 0 is F T by F T 0 from this stoichiometric relationships we get V by V 0 as 1 plus X A. So, what we have been able to do is that we are able to tell how volume volumetric flow changes as reaction proceeds. 
Now, to be able to tell what is the uh, uh, concentration, we, we know concentration is F A by V if it is a flow system. F A is F A 0 times 1 minus of X A, V just now we have shown is V 0 times 1 plus X A. Therefore, we are now able to tell that concentration at any conversion is C A 0 multiplied by 1 minus X A by 1 plus X A. Okay. So, in essence what we have been able to do now is that you are able to express concentration in terms of conversion. Now, in this problem it is given it is given that it is a second order reaction that means R A is given as minus K times C A square it is given. Okay. It is given in the problem statement. So, that now we have that if design equation for C S T have we already done. So, that volume of the equipment is F A 0 times X A times minus of R A and what is mi minus of R A is simply from from what we got here minus of R is K times C A square. So, that is what is done here C A is uh, C A 0 1 minus X 1 plus X A. So, I put here. So, you get minus of R A you have taken the signs into account. So, K times C A 0 square 1 minus X A whole square by 1 plus X A whole square. So, the volume of this equipment is F A 0 times all this. So, when you put all these numbers first you calculate concentration which is P by R T calculate it as 0 0.0514 moles per liter at the temperature of 520 C. Okay. So, what do we get? We get reactor volume we put all the numbers here F A 0 is given as 1 mole per hour we want X A of 0 0.5 our concentration at C A 0 is 0 0.0154 you can put all these numbers we get C S T R volume as 16 liters and C S T R residence time is 878 seconds. We are looking at case 1 where we have a C S T R we want to get 50 percent conversion or X A equal to 0 0.5 we were not saying that to get 0 0.5 conversion we need a residence time of 878 seconds the reactor volume should be 16 liters for this 1 mole per hour. Okay. Second exercise now we want to do the same thing we want to do the same thing in a in a PFR at constant volume which means we want to do this problem in in a constant pressure PFR where the molar flow is 1 gamma mole per hour pressure is maintained at 1 atmosphere temperature is maintained at 520 C. How do we do this? We recall that our design equation for a PFR is simply V F A 0 integral 0 to X A d X A by minus of R A. We have done this earlier. What is R A? Is K times C A 0 square 1 minus of X A by 1 plus. This also we have just now done because we have derived C A in terms of conversion. So, you simply what is the volume of the equipment? F A 0 times 0 to you have to go from 0 to X x a and we notice that we want x a of 0 0.5 in this case this is what we want. Okay. So, we have put the uh, rate function here. So, we simply have to integrate this to find the value of the size of the equipment that is required to do this. Now, this is a very simple integration I have done this integration. So, this is how the answers look like that volume of the equipment is given by this relationship and you can put all your numbers F A 0 is known, C A 0 is everything is known. So, you can calculate the volume of the equipment to be 6.3 liters. Please recognize that in the previous case when you used a CSTR we got 16.0 liters. Now, the volume required is only 6.3 liters and the residence time defined as V by V 0 is 346 seconds. We got 878 seconds last time. Okay. Now, what are we saying? That means, when you use a CSTR as the reaction equipment we require much bigger equipment and while you use PFR then you have much smaller equipment. Okay. So, we will come back to this in a minute. Now, one issue that we would always like to know because there is a change in volume and we are calculating our residence time as tau s V divided by V 0 where V 0 is the volumetric flow at the inlet, but the fact is that because of volume change the volumetric flow is increasing in this case. Therefore, actual time of residence inside the equipment is, is different from what we have found out based on V by V 0. So, it is of interest to us to actually find out what is the residence time that is experienced by the fluid elements. How do we do this? Then we derive what we call as the actual residence time that is required for this equipment. Well, how do you define actual residence time? D tau which is the actual residence time is simply D tau is d V by V. That means, if you take an elemental volume d V and divide by the volumetric flow at that position that gives the residence time for that differential element. Therefore, we can use the design equation for P f r which is d f a d V equal to r a and then simplify this and get what we call as 
uh, actual residence time in terms of uh, the rate function and so on. Okay. We already derived all these things in our area class. Therefore, this basically gives us what is the, uh, the actual residence time now in terms of other measured properties like x a and so on. Okay. This can be integrated and we get a result like this. It says that the actual residence time in a PFR where there is increase in volume can be integrated to get what this in this function where x is the extent of reaction or conversion. You can put your numbers x is 0.5 we know that k is known c a 0 is known I put all the numbers here you get actual time of residence is 261 seconds. What are we saying? What we are saying is that if we have a plug flow reactor entering at 1 mole per hour and then temperature is 520 because of this reaction even though the residence time based on inlet molar flow is 346 seconds actual time of residence is only 261 seconds because of the fact that there is an increase in volume or increase in molecular volumetric flow rate as the reaction proceeds. The next issue that we would like to look at is what happens suppose we conduct the reaction in a constant volume batch reactor how does it look let us see how it looks. Now, our constant volume batch reactor we have uh, looked at the uh, design equation for batch input output generation accumulation there is no input there is no output therefore, this is d n a by d t this is the statement of material balance for a batch reactor something that we have done. Okay. Now, once again C a is what n a by v and since this constant volume batch therefore, v is v 0 therefore, C a becomes C a 0 1 minus of x a. Okay. Please notice that the function C a if for a constant volume batch is C a 0 1 minus of x a, but for the case where there is constant pressure we have the effect that we have already shown. Now, you can substitute n a in terms of n a 0 and so on finally, the kind of equation that you have to solve is a, this is the kind of equation that you have to solve. Notice here this equation looks very different from what we have done for a constant pressure batch. Okay. So, we can put all the numbers and then integrate and so on. So, we will get for a constant volume batch the reaction time is given by x a by 1 minus of x a times 1 by k c a 0. So, this is the integrated form for the case when there is a constant volume batch. Please notice, please notice that the final result we get for a constant volume batch is quite different from what we got for the other two cases we have considered. If you put your numbers you find that the reaction time for a constant volume batch is 196 seconds. What are we saying? What we are saying is that when we do this in the case when we, this is for a constant pressure CSTR, this is for a constant pressure PFR, we have, then we also looked at what is the actual residence time here. Now, we are looking at a constant volume batch reactor for this case we find that the reaction time for a conversion of 0.5 is about 196 seconds much lower than these two cases we have considered so far. So, the reaction time required for a constant volume batch is only 196 seconds. Okay. Let us see what happens if we conduct this the same reaction in a constant pressure batch. How do you get constant pressure? We get constant pressure by providing a piston which is able to move up and down depending on changes in pressure inside it keeps the volume uh, its volume changes keeping the pressure constant. Okay. So, what do we do you allow the, uh, the, the volume to change because the piston is able to move. Okay. So, we are looking at a case of constant pressure variable volume this is a case of variable volume. Okay. So, let us quickly run through this how it looks. So, once again we are writing the material balance there is input output generation accumulation there is no input because the batch process there is no output because the batch process therefore, generation equal to accumulation therefore, d by d t f equal to r a v. Once again v by v this gas law will hold temperature does not change compressibility changes are not important there is no change in pressure because we are keeping the pressure constant therefore, v by v 0 that means, change in volume of the equipment is n t by n t 0. We have shown from our stoichiometry that n t by n t 0 1 plus x a therefore, volume of the reaction equipment divided by the volume at 0 time is 1 plus x a. Now, what is concentration? We said concentration is number of moles divided by volume number of moles is n a 0 times 1 minus of x a therefore, we get we get that c a at any 
conversion is C A 0 1 minus V X A by 1 plus X A something similar to what we already got for constant pressure case earlier. So, we get the same kind of result C A is C A 0 1 minus V X A by 1 plus X A. Okay. Now, we know what is the rate function rate function we can therefore, substitute from our uh, we can substitute for R A our rate functions are known therefore, we can substitute and integrate this to find our solution that is what has been done. So, left hand side d n a by d t is replaced like this the right hand side r a v is replaced like this. So, that you get d by d t of x a is given by this relationship. So, our result will come from the solution of this equation for the case of constant pressure variable volume batch. Okay. When you integrate this this is the result you get. In other words, for the case of constant pressure variable volume batch reactor, the answer we get is reaction time equal to this result. And you will notice that this is exactly the same result we got for the actual residence time in a PFR. In other words, the result that we are getting for actual residence time in a PFR and for constant pressure variable volume batch is identical. Okay. Therefore, when you put all the numbers, you get the, the actual time that is required T r is equal to 261 second that is what we got for the case of actual residence time in a PFR. So, what are we saying? What we are trying to say is the following this is important. We have the problem we are trying to solve is this that you have a reaction which is undergoing uh, decomposition to give you methane carbon monoxide. We have conducted the reaction in a constant pressure CSTR. Okay. You have conducted the reaction in constant pressure PFR, you have conducted the reaction okay, constant volume batch okay. and then you have conducted the uh, this one in the case in a variable volume constant pressure batch. Okay. So, there are four cases. Okay. Notice here, here the initial pressure is one atmosphere, okay. pressure would change because of the reaction. Now, to understand this what I have done is I have just looking at how the different equipments would perform constant volume batch constant pressure batch, constant pressure PFR, constant pressure CSTR. I have just set out here what is the rate expression that we are getting for each case. For each case what is the rate expression that we are getting. If you look carefully you find that constant volume batch the rate expression is K is C A 0 1 minus x whole square. While in the other cases there is a denominator 1 plus x A whole square or in other words in a constant volume batch the rate at which chemical reaction occurs is always much much higher than the rate at which chemical reaction occurs if it is a constant pressure batch. And because the fact that the reaction rates are much higher in a constant volume batch the time of residence the time of reaction is much slower compared to the constant pressure batch. Similarly, if you look at constant pressure PFR once again we find that the reaction time is higher than constant volume batch. The reason is the rate expression itself to shows you very clearly that the rate of chemical reaction in constant pressure batch in constant pressure PFR is much lower than the rate of chemical reaction in constant volume batch that is why you get a uh, higher uh, time of reaction. Now, if you look at a constant pressure CSTR our rate expression if you see carefully is, is such that the, the uh, it is much much lower than the others and therefore, you find that the reaction times are very large. So, what are we trying to tell? What we are trying to say is that in our reactor design we must take care to see that the rate expression that we would choose or the equipment that you would choose should have very high reaction rates at every point of the equipment that is important at every point of the equipment and that is why because it is very favorable in constant volume batch we get very small reaction time it is not so favorable in a CSTR therefore, we get very high reaction time. Therefore, choice of equipment really depends upon how well we understand the reaction kinetics so that we can maximize or minimize maximize the benefit or minimize the size of the equipment that we use for our application. Let us just quickly recall what we have said what we have said is that we have a reaction. Okay. And this in this reaction we are trying to look at uh, what is the performance of various kinds of devices uh, for a given reaction. The reaction of our interest is we wrote this reaction as acetaldehyde CH 3 CH O giving you CH 4 
plus C O correct C H 4 plus C O. Okay. Now, we looked at various devices I have just uh, summarized this just to bring to your attention some important features. What we have shown through our uh, calculations is that constant volume batch reactor has the rate expression if you see the rate expression for a constant volume batch and compare this with constant pressure batch this is also a constant pressure CSTR. The rate expression shows very clearly that the reaction rates that we can achieve in a constant volume batch is much much higher than the reaction rates that you will get in constant pressure and then and in a constant pressure CSTR. In both these cases the reaction rates are less because the rate expressions are like that. Therefore, if we can actually uh, utilize a constant pressure uh, constant volume uh, kind of batch equipment we will get higher reaction rates. That is one important point that we are trying to get across. The second point we try to get across to you is that even if you are having a constant pressure process for example, a constant pressure PFR and a constant pressure CSTR. Okay. Now, both cases the reaction rate expressions are the same, but notice that the residence time is, is 261 for a PFR and 878 for a CSTR. How do we explain this? We explain this by recognizing that there is a fundamental difference between CSTR and a PFR because the residence times are very different. In other words, CSTR because it operates at exit conditions of conversion, conversion exit conditions of conversion, the reaction rates that is achieved in a CSTR is that of the reaction rates at the exit, while in a PFR the reaction rates are at the instant positions at which the reaction is taking place. In other words, on even though the, the reaction rate expressions are the same, PFR has a much higher average reaction rates compared to CSTR. This point must be borne in mind in the choice of reaction equipment. So, this is one example that uh, we would like to recognize. Okay. Now, there is another example we would like to take to illustrate how our uh, uh, system would perform when there are certain important changes taking place in the equipment. For example, the problem we would like to now address is there is a, a plug flow reactor. There is a plug flow reactor in which there is a reaction A going to be. Reaction A going to be and this plug flow reactor contains a catalyst. Okay. Now, what comes in the feed is coming in at 20 atmospheres and because of pressure drop the, the pressure that goes out is less than what is coming in. Okay. And then the pressure gradient that we are exp expecting in this process is given as dp dw is minus of 0.2. Or in other words, as fluid moves, the pressure drops at this rate dp dw is minus of 0.2, pressure keeps on decreasing. Okay. And because of decrease in pressure, we expect some effect on the process, and that is what we would like to quantitatively understand and evaluate. What are we saying? that rate of chemical reaction is given as minus of k times C a. It is a first order reaction okay? uh, and k is the rate constant. Rate constant is given, everything is given. Okay. Now, what is being said in this problem is that you in an experiment in which you have uh, feed coming in, feed going out and so on, you are experiencing as 86.5 percent conversion. Okay. Now, what is asked of you is what do you expect to see if there was no pressure drop? You understand that if, this, if there was no pressure drop, what do we expect to see? That is one. Second point is that if instead of using a PFR, if we had used a CSTR, what do we expect to see? That means, you have got some data based on in your experiments where you find 86.5 percent is the conversion because of this pressure gradient and you would like to know Suppose, first by some design of this catalyst, you could have substantially eliminated this pressure drop due to this catalyst. What is the likely benefit you will see in this equipment PFR or alternatively, what is the likely benefit you would see if you had a CSTR? So, this is the question that we are trying to answer. Okay. Let us see how to understand this. Now, our data says that it is 86.5 percent conversion using the existing equipment where there is pressure drop in this dp dw is 0.2. So, we have to first model this equipment to understand what are the features of this equipment that we are using. What does it say? DFA dv is a by this PFR equation 
k which is given as minus of k c a first order reaction. Now, it is a gas phase reaction therefore, our gas law will hold V by V 0 F T by F T 0 T by T 0 P 0 by P Z by Z 0. Okay. This is gas law. We know from our uh, problem statement that pressure changes because it is of the pressure gradient d p d minus of 0.2. So, that when you integrate this you get that the pressure at any point is pressure at the inlet multiplied by 0 0.2 times w. That means, pressure keeps on decreasing by this relationship. So, that if you want p by p 0 we get this relationship. So, why are we writing this relationship? We are writing this relationship because we know that our volumetric flow depends on pressure. So, how the pressure changes accordingly our volumetric flow is affected and if volumetric flow is affected we know concentrations are affected. So, you will find the pressure will have an effect on concentration and therefore, it will have an effect on the rate of chemical reaction. So, it is that effect that we want to quantitate in this problem. So, what are we saying? What are we saying is that d f d a d v is r a which is minus of k c a. Now, we have been given catalyst w. So, it is not volume that is given what is given is weight of catalyst. So, we would express this in terms of the data that is given that is what is done here volume is expressed as w divided by rho is volume. So, I put the rho on the numerator. So, we have this equation which tells you the first our uh, what is called as our uh, design equation. So, C a is what we said C a is f a by v, but f a is what f a 0 1 minus of x a from stoichiometry and what is v? We have said just now we have said just now from here v by v 0 is what p 0 by p. What is so that means this relationship appears here. So, when you substitute this into this relationship we find v by v 0 becomes our v becomes v 0 times p 0 by p. So, this effect this effect of volume v by v 0 what is v equal to v 0 times p 0 by p because t by t 0 is 1 z by z 0 is 1 f t by f t 0 is 1 because there is no change in volume due to reaction. So, but there is change in volumetric flow because of pressure variation that is the effect we are trying to quantitate. So, what have we got here concentration at any position is F a 0 times 1 minus of x a it comes in stoichiometry while volumetric flow changes because of pressure variation is V 0 times P 0 by P. So, that now we see concentration C a is written as C a 0 1 minus of x a multiplied by this term which takes into account the effect of pressure drop. Okay. Now, we can substitute all these things into our design equation here. So, that you get d by d v for d by d w of x a rate at which conversion changes with weight of the catalyst is given by k times rho times v 0 where are we this how it comes you are substituting for c a here. So, it comes uh, relationships like this where k by v 0 rho which we do not know x a is given as 0.85 for this particular case of p f r. So, if you integrate this if you integrate this this equation essentially it tells you how the p f r that we have got in our experiment is performing that is what has been done that is what has been done and we find that when we integrate this we get a relationship like this this is the final result we get when we integrate the final result we get is for this p f r containing 60 kg of catalyst catalyst 1 minus of x a is multiplied alpha times w minus beta and so on, where beta is what? Beta is w by beta is beta equal to uh, 0.2, oh, I may have mentioned it, uh, beta is 0.2 by p 0, sorry, okay, that is beta. Okay. So, x a is given, what is alpha? Alpha is this, which is unknown. Okay p 0 is known. So, this quantity is known beta by p 0 is known. Therefore, we can substitute the value of x a coming from our experiment that is what I have done. What I have done here is that in this solution I have substituted the data which x a is given x a not x x a x a is 0.865 w is given so many kg okay. beta is given b p 0 is 0 0.01. Therefore, you can put all the numbers and find out what is the value of alpha that is appropriate to our experiment. So, essentially what we have done so far is that from the data that is given to us we have calculated what is the value of uh, we have calculated what is the value of uh, parameters that describes this data. Our parameters are alpha by 
is the parameter of the process therefore, alpha is equal to 0 0.0476. So, what have we done? What we have done is that we have taken a problem in which data is given x a is 0 0.865 then the weight of the catalyst is given in that pressures are given. So, that we have characterized this in terms of what is the value of alpha that is responsible for this kind of chemical reaction. Okay. Now, the question is now that the alpha is known we can answer the question that we want to answer what happens if there is no pressure drop. What happens if you instead of using PFR, if you use a stirred tank? Let us try to answer that question. So, suppose we have a plug flow reactor in which there is no pressure drop, for which this value of alpha is known, this is alpha, this is alpha, which is known in this case is given as 0 0.0476. Okay. Therefore, what we simply have to find out integrate this, when you integrate this, you find that our PFR in the absence of uh, pressure drop is given by this relationship. This is the solution. Our solution is this and what is the value of x a? If I ask you alpha is known because alpha is 0 0.4076, w is known which is 60 kg. Therefore, you can find out what is the conversion that we would expect if there was no pressure drop. Now, the context to this question is the important. Why are we looking at the case of no pressure drop? It tells us that what was 86.5 when there is pressure drop actually becomes 94 when there is no pressure drop. In other words, there is considerable benefit in a process to significantly reduce pressure drop by a suitable design of your catalyst. That is the point that is being made. Okay. The second question that is that we are trying to answer is suppose instead of using a PFR, we had used a stirred tank. That means, what is a stirred tank? You have a catalyst, a 60 kg of catalyst you want to support in on a basket. That means, you have a spinning basket into which you have to support the 60 kg of cat. It is not a very difficult thing to do uh, appropriately or to design the stirrer and so on. And once you do that, you are able to put your feed, your feed comes in and your feed goes out, product go out and your reactor design equation is V by F, V equal to F A 0 X A by minus of R A. So, that you can put all your rate functions here. Okay rate function R a is we have just now been shown that R a is minus of k times C a it is a first order process. Therefore, you can find out what is the weight of the catalyst okay, uh, weight of the cat in terms of the parameters of the system. What are the parameters of the system here? Alpha. Alpha is given therefore, you can find out what is the extent to which you can drive the reaction what is the value of x a. Okay. What is the value of x a? So, let me do this calculation for you w 60. Okay and then V 0 alpha is uh, alpha is k by k by V 0 that is 0 0.0076 0 0.0476 okay, equal to x a by 1 minus x a. So, you can find out the value of x a. Okay. So, what we are saying is that we can find out the value of x a since we know the alpha values. So, the, the problem that we are trying to solve is in the absence of uh, uh, pressure drop there are significant benefits to be achieved if you have a uh, plug flow reactor without pressure drop. Now, the idea of doing what is called as a CSTR as a spinning basket is something very important that you should recognize. Now, generally to be able to get good data on kinetics on a catalyst, it is important to have temperatures around the catalyst to be uh, uniform and spinning baskets give you very good temperature uniformity. And this is what makes spinning basket reactors extremely valuable for catalyst evaluation. How well the catalyst performs under various conditions, get good kinetic data so that you can model the kinetics properly, which you can use for design. So, you will find that CSTR data is what is generally useful from the point of view of trying to get good kinetic data for design. Okay. Having said this, about pressure drop, there are few things that I would like to draw your attention from the point of view of pressure drop in a process. I have taken an example here. The example is that suppose we look at sulfur dioxide reaction, sulfur dioxide giving you sulfur trioxide SO2 plus half O2 to SO3. The very old process running maybe for last 100, 150 years, vanadium pentoxide catalyst is well known. Okay. I have just taken some data from a 3000 tons per day SO2 plant. The plant itself, it is in four stages. I mean, for at after every stage, the sulfur dioxide, sulfur trioxide produced is taken for absorption 
and then it is put back. So, it is what is called as a double contact double absorption process, but our concern here is something else. Typically, the beds are about 0.25 to 0.75 meters thick and about 70 to 80 tons of catalyst is what is used and the pressure drop that is observed is about 0 0.055 atmospheres. This typical pressure drops that we see in the sulfur dioxide plant. Now, a 3000 tons per day sulfur dioxide plant because of nitrogen coming in along with oxygen and so on, the actual flow at the reaction conditions is around 317 cubic meters per second. It is a fairly large flow. You have a pressure drop of 0 0.055 atmospheres I put it in terms of Newtons and then if you take the efficiency of blower to be about 70 percent which is about typical you find that the energy that is required to, uh, to actually pump these gases into the system requires 2.5 megawatts. The point I am trying to put across to you is that the energy that is required to overcome pressure drop is a very significant part of our cost. Okay. And therefore, any work that we can do to take care of this pressure drop is would be extremely valuable. So, it usually shows in a sulfur dioxide plant, we are spending about 2.5 megawatts of energy to be able to push the gases through the system and solve because of pressure drop. Okay. So, just to sort of uh, emphasize the point that anything we can do to design catalyst better it will be, be a great advantage from the point of view of energy consumption, of course, from the point of view of cost as well. Okay. That is the point I am trying to take across. So, let us just summarize what we have tried to say in this exercise is that we have looked at design equations for idealized cases and then we have said that the, the design equations uh, various choices exist and these choices give you various kinds of reactor designs and these reactor designs you know give you various kinds of performance and uh, and those performances have implications in terms of cost and so on and we took the example of pressure drop to illustrate how our designs must look for catalyst which is not very high in terms of pressure drop okay now we'll go to the next item now will is suppose instead of uh, looking at uh, what is called as a, a plug flow reactor, we put a recycle. Let us say we are considering a reaction A A plus B B going to C C plus D D. This is the reaction we are considering. Now, our interest in trying to understand a recycle are many. Why do we recycle? We generally the recycle that you will you will find in process industry is mostly because we want to make better use of this of the of the energy here because it is hot we want to make use of the heat that is one reason. There are of course, there are other reasons for uh, looking at recycles, but before we do that let us just look at recycle from a more fundamental point of view. Okay. We want to set up design equations therefore, we want to understand how to handle recycle. So, to uh, illustrate this what I have done I have just put down suppose there was no catalyst that means, you have a recycle ratio I have taken an example here let us say the recycle ratio is 4. How do you define recycle ratio? Moles in, in stream 4 to moles in stream 3. It is defined that way. Okay. Recycle ratio is defined as moles in stream 4 divided by moles in stream 3. There are some people who define this volume of volumetric flow in stream 4 divided by volumetric flow in stream 3. Instead of moles, people might define in terms of volume, but you should be careful here because temperatures at 3 and temperature at 4 may be different. Therefore, those ratios have to be carefully looked at. Therefore, I have taken recycle ratio in terms of moles, if a moles at 3 to moles, moles at 4 to moles at 3. Okay. Now, I ask you suppose there is no chemical reaction, there is no, there is no catalyst here. Therefore, you are putting a recycle ratio of 4. What are the flow rates at various points? Now, it stands to reason F A 0 if it is 1, what is F A 3? It has to be 1 because you know whatever course it must come out. Okay. Now, what will be F A 4? 4 times this I put 4 here. What is F A 2 and 3? I put the numbers. Or in other words, what we are trying to say here is when there is no chemical reaction or in other words, when there is no catalyst in the reactor, the molar flow rates through the system at position 1 and position 2, uh, position 1 is 5 and position 2 is 5. Why is position 2 5? Because there is no reaction. 
why is position 1 phi because there is no reaction. But the important point we should bear in mind is that the fluid that is entering at position 1 is 5 units. Okay. 5 units are entering. Okay. Now, let us, say, let us say what happens to fluorides at all these positions when the extent of reaction is about 40 percent or x a is 0.4. So, if I say that we are entering at 1 mole per hour, 1 mole per u, whatever the number may be per hour per second whatever is 1. If I say that the, the uh, conversion is 0.4 and if I ask you what is coming out at position 3, you will say it is 0.6. Why? Because 40 percent is the conversion. So, if I say conversion is 40 percent as is said mentioned here, how much is coming out at position 3? Clearly, it will be 0 0.6 because 40 percent is converted. Okay. Now, if I say that recycle ratio is 4, how much is F A 4? You will say it is 2.4, 4 times 0 0.6, 2 point. Okay. How much is F A 2? What you will say? It is F A 3 plus F A 4, therefore, it must be 3. What is it F A 1? What you will say? F A 1 is F A 0 plus F A 4, F A 0 is 1, F A 4 is 2.4, therefore, F A 1 is 3.4. This comes from our material balance. So, on the basis of the numbers that I have given you, you will find that the fluorate at position 1 is 3.4, fluorate at position 3 is 0 0.6, position 2 is 3.0. The question that I want to ask you is, what is the conversion it at position 1? What is the conversion at position 2? Okay. How would you answer this question? What is the conversion at position 1? What is the conversion at position 2? A simple answer you would give me is between position 2 and position 3 there is no chemical reactor. Therefore, we should expect that the conversion at position 2 and position 3 must be the same. Okay. So, that means at position 2 conversion should be 0.4, position 3 also conversion should be 0.4. Here we know that the conversion is here we know that conversion is 0.4 anyway based on our under, physical understanding. We want conversion here also to be 0.4. How can we make conversion here 0.4? By an appropriate choice of our reference. So, if we chose 5 as our reference, that means if we chose 5 units as the reference on the basis of which we will define conversion inside the recycle loop, then clearly we find that conversion here at position 2 is 0.4. What I am trying to get across to you is that whenever you are looking at a recycle device, the choice of reference inside the recycle device is important and that choice should be the moles of component A entering at position 1 in the absence of reaction because our reference is always on the basis of absence of reaction. How much is going into the equipment in the absence of reaction? We know that at position 1, 5 units were entering in the absence of reaction. You can see here, 5 units were entering in the absence of reaction. Moment reaction took place, the amount of coming here is 3.4. Therefore, what I want to ask you is that, what is the conversion that is appropriately defined in the presence of reaction at position 1? Now, you will tell me that in the absence of reaction, 5 units are entering. In the presence of reaction, it is only 3.4. Therefore, conversion at position 1 is 3.4 divided by 5, 1 minus. So, conversion here, it would be 1 minus 3.4 divided by 5. This would be the conversion. Why divided by 5? Because 5 was the units that was entering in the absence of reaction. 3.4 is in the presence of reaction and 1 minus this is the conversion. So, what is it? 3.4 divided by 5. So, this becomes 0 0.32. So, this becomes 0 0.32. So, what are we saying? What we are saying is when we have a recycled device, we need a proper reference to be able to work inside the recycled device. Okay. To work inside the recycled device, we must have a proper conversion. As we can see in the slide that inside the recycled device, if you define conversion on the basis of 5 units, you find that conversion at point 1 is 0 0.32, conversion at point 2 is 0 0.4, conversion at point 0.3 is also 0.4, showing that as you go from point 0.2 to point 0.3, the conversion remains consistent with our understanding.
So, this is the most important point in the recycle device we must choose conversion which is consistent across point 2 and point 3. And similarly, conversion at point 1 should be consistent with respect to what enters at position 1 in the absence of reaction, which in this case is uh, 5 units. But in expressed in terms of our variables, what we are saying is that if F A 0 is entering the process, what enters the recycle system is R plus 1 F A 0. What we are saying is that what enters the reactor, what enters the reactor in the absence of chemical reaction is r plus 1 fa 0 when when r is 0 then what is entering is fa 0 when r is finite what enters the reactor in the absence of chemical reaction is r plus 1 fa 0 therefore inside the recycle loop our reference for defining conversion should be r plus 1 fa 0 we take up more of this when we meet next time thank you